Good morning, Lehigh. I'm Ariel Ranker, and this is Real Lehigh News, your most trustworthy source for up-to-the-minute coverage of the happenings, politics, and scandals of Lehigh University. Surveillance testing has indicated an alarming jump in positive cases of COVID-19 in the weeks leading up to Thanksgiving. An estimated 9% of both on- and off-campus Lehigh students are currently infected with the virus. To put this in perspective, if you randomly selected 10 members of your fraternity or sorority, all of them definitely have COVID. Provost Nathan Urban announced in a school-wide email this week that, in light of midterm results, Lehigh will be changing its grading policy once again this semester. As Urban writes in the email, quote, We were hopeful that students would have adjusted to online learning by the fall term, but we never could have predicted the significant negative effect on academic performance that would be caused by sitting alone in a tiny room all day during a global pandemic, hoping that your dumbass housemate doesn't bring back COVID from a small gathering of close friends. In lieu of traditional letter grades, Lehigh is now following in the footsteps of many top-tier progressive elementary schools and ranking each student using a performance rubric and a scale of animal stickers. This semester, a high-performing student might expect to receive a Mountain Hawk sticker in their Plays Well With Others column of the Organic Chemistry grade sheet. However, a slacker might find a leopard on their Econ grades Submits Work in a Timely Manner section. We now have an update on our story about Donald Trump's honorary Lehigh degree. Several math grad students have spent weeks relearning third grade arithmetic in an attempt to numerically explain why any adults affiliated with the university still oppose revoking Trump's degree. Their efforts finally paid off when late Tuesday evening, one of them discovered a pair of elegant, perfect formulas. 2020 minus 1988 equals 32, and 32 plus 22 equals 54. In layman's terms, this means that a member of the graduating class of 1988, who helped elect Donald Trump as their commencement speaker, would be roughly 54 today. These results were cross-referenced with a list of faculty and board of trustees members, and in a shocking turn of events, 1988 Lehigh grads overlapped nearly 100% with people who support Trump representing the university. The student who discovered the correlation said that at first she found the problem to be too complex. She said she was, quote, overwhelmed at the amount of variables needed to explain how anyone, let alone multiple highly ranked university officials, could make this bad of a decision. However, in a stroke of luck, she contracted COVID, and the resulting brain fog helped her simplify the calculations and realize that some people are just dinosaurs. Lehigh University recently announced a series of virtual study abroad alternatives to now impractical international trips. Program offerings include a winter break backpacking trip via FaceTime call from a Sherpa's front pocket, a physical education course taught by throwing snowballs at students across the Canadian border, and an online course at Hanyang University in South Korea for the low price of $1,550. The study abroad office remains confident that students will find the course offerings to not only be a reasonable alternative, but also a robust educational experience that can expose them to cultures outside the ones they've developed in their houses for the past nine months. In the spirit of realism, all participating students will be required to get vaccines and their families will be required to speak with accents and cook regionally specific food for the duration of the program. However, many underclassmen have voiced concerns that they will be missing out on a vital component of the study abroad experience, legally drinking during class. For some members of the Lehigh community, this past year has been devastating. It's been long, difficult, and uncertain. I'm referring, of course, to the squirrel population. Without their usual steady supply of pizza, chips, and spilled beer, some Lehigh squirrels have been struggling to make ends meet. 
Statistics show that 66% of Lehi's squirrels have forgotten what a nut looks like, and 47% do not know where their next meal is coming from. 23% are doing just fine and have recovered from type 2 diabetes, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Many of the squirrels who live on the hill are going through withdrawals. In response to this sad news, and a general lack of anything new to put on their resumes, several sophomore eco-reps have banded together to start the Sponsor a Squirrel initiative. Now, for only a can of beer and three homework answers per week, you can help buy a box of pizza for a family of squirrels. You will also receive a blurry picture of some squirrels from several yards away, and a free plastic grocery bag that definitely isn't infected with COVID. That's all the news on Fit to Print. I'm Ariel Ranker, this attic is freezing, and this has been Real Lehigh News. Hello Lehigh, I'm Ben Metz, and on today's episode of Metz Meets, I'm meeting with a representative on, of the Cheese Board of Cheese Club, Mr. Kyle Rifkin. Cheese Club is the Hello. most popular club on campus, and to its club members, it provides a multitude of, well, you guessed it, cheese. Kyle, it's a pleasure to have you on our show today. It's great to be here, Ben. So, starting off, how did the club start? So we were actually founded our freshman year, so fall of 2018. Uh, our founding president, Matt Reel, held a cheese tasting in his dorm room for his birthday. And then I am going to quote him directly here. He wanted to know if he could get Lehigh University to pay for this. And yes, they can. <laughs> Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your cheese knowledgeability and the knowledgeability of the other board members? You, you know, the, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. So I, like, I can talk for like a good five minutes on just cheeses, like different things like that. But if, like, I wouldn't know how to make it. So I'd say overall like a 7 out of 10. Which cheese promote most serotonin for you? I mean, depends on the day. I really love halloumi, which is a cheese we had at one of our events. Um, and what, what I love about that one is it has an extremely high melting point. So you can just fry it in a pan and it fries up really crispy. It's, a, it's like a, almost like bacon, honestly. And it's just absolutely delicious. What scares you more, um, contracting COVID-19 or developing a lactose intolerance? Contracting COVID-19 because I've heard, one, wear a mask, people. Uh, two, one of the hallmark symptoms is a loss of taste and smell, and there are documented cases of it not returning for months or even years. Uh, well, there are people who have had it for several months who still have not had their sense of taste or smell returned. So I can either limit my cheese from lactose intolerance or just not be able to taste it or any other food. Which board member runs the club's Twitter account, and what's wrong with them? Uh, that would be me, and I'm not sure. <laughs> Good answer. If you could make a sandwich out of cheese and only cheese, which cheese would you use for the buns, the patty, and of course, the cheese? Uh, halloumi would definitely be the bread um, because it gets nice and crispy and it'll hold itself together pretty well. Um, then I would probably throw like a, maybe something like a brie in there for something just nice and soft. And then probably like a, something like a provolone, you know, a little bit of a go-between, not no too crazy flavors because you've already got a lot of strong flavors from the brie. What is the most money that you or the cheese club has ever spent on a cheese? Uh, our last event for all of the cheese, the bill came to around $5,000. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah, uh, we pulled a lot of money from different parts of the university and we wound up with about 300 people in attendance. Uh, two, actually about 250. Um, and we all just congregated for free cheese. I do love those tastings. Speaking of, what is the best attire for a cheese tasting? Uh, so the rules for the cutting board are dressed sharper than the cheese we're eating. So cutting board generally does business formal. Um, so like suits, cocktail dresses, but we also have a, a very dedicated group of people who we appreciate. We have shown up to every meeting in capes and heelys and just power to them, honestly. Hmm. I think I might have a couple of uh, blankets that I can tie around my neck and use as capes. Oh. Uh, hey guys, so sorry to interrupt, but uh, you know Mr. Metz, he likes to drink tea while he's tasting his cheese. So Mr. Metz, I brewed you a fresh cup of tea here. Uh, here you go. Thank you. 
You got you got it? Oh. Thank you, peasant. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you. Thank you, Jess. Delicious. In terms of government power, do you believe in the separation of cheese and state? The two entities should be inherently separate, but still working hand in hand. What do you think of this kalimba? Specifically, this note, the E. Uh, well, E is half of cheese, so I like that one. Some nice cheese you got there. What, what kind is that? Solid. Kyle, why cheese? I think part of the reason our club has had so much success is because cheese is, one, it, it's delicious, it's tasty, there's so many varieties of it, but it also seen as often like a very classy, very exclusive thing. One of the ways our club thrives is bringing that exclusivity to the masses and making it very approachable. Like all of our events, we strive to have as many people as possible and we don't charge admission. So we are just looking to, like no matter where you are on campus, no matter who you're who your friends are, what you're doing, like, just come eat some cheese. Like, it just, we try to make it as approachable as we can. That is all the interview questions we have prepared for you and all the time we have today. So, Mr. Rifkin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This was great.
This week's featured commenter is M. Thampo, who asked, Oh my gosh, is that mixed notations? Yes, M, it is. If you have any questions for us, put them down below, and you could be next. <laughs> 